Good morning everybody and welcome to another week of King's Kids Online. Um, we hope you're well, we hope you've had a great week and a great start to your summer holiday and thank you once again for joining with us this morning to worship God and um, to learn more about him from his word. So let's start off just by praying together. Father God we are just so thankful for another week in which we can meet together online and um, in which we can praise your name and learn more about you. Thank you for all of our boys and girls and for all their families and for everybody from our church family who've joined with us this morning. And we ask that this will be a time of blessing and a time of great encouragement. And we just, Father, trust that you will be with us and we just thank you so much for your son, Jesus. And we just pray, Father, that you will open our hearts and minds to your word this morning and that you will teach us what you want us to know. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, you might have noticed already that the name that we're thinking about today is The Lord My Light. And so because of that, we've got two songs this week that are all about light. And the first one we're going to sing is a King's Kids favourite, and it's My Lighthouse. Um, so get up, do your dancing, do your actions, and um, yeah, praise God by singing My Lighthouse and trusting that he will carry us safe to shore. <laughs> In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. Questions your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my to show
Okay, boys and girls, what a great song to start off our time of worship and learning together. Um, My Lighthouse is just amazing. And um, yeah, last week we learned about how God is our strength and we set you a memory verse challenge to learn a verse from the book of Psalms all about how God is our strength and shield. And sure, we sing that in the song, Never Be Shaken. So we've got some King's Kids friends who have done really well at learning the memory verse. So um, they're coming up now. So let's see how they got on. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy and with my song I praise him. Psalm chapter 28 verse 7 Hello everyone, today we will be doing this week's memory verse challenge. The Lord is my strength and shield. My heart trusts in him. And he helps me. My heart leaps for joy. And with my song, I praise him. Psalm 28, verse 7. Bye everyone, we miss you. Okay, thank you to Evie and Elsa and Gracie. It was lovely to see you. Thank you for taking part. And also Gabriella and Nathan. And um, just thank you for learning the wee memory verse. And we hope that you remember all of these things. And there's a verse in the Bible that talks about how um, we can hide God's word in our hearts um, so that we won't sin against him. And when we learn our memory verses, that's a little bit like hiding God's word in our heart. We're storing it up in our real lives so that we can remember the truth of who God is and how how we can trust him no matter what is happening in our wee lives. So look out again for our memory verse challenge um, tomorrow morning on our King's Kids page and um, see how you got on at learning it. Okay, boys and girls, coming up is the quick recap of everything we have learned so far. So we hope you enjoy it and um, see how many that you can remember. and girls I love the quick recap I love that we have learned so many truths about God and I just love that there's still so much more that we can learn about God and um, God is truly truly amazing and all of these truths are wonderful things to be remembering about God so we've got a new name for God today and it's the Lord my light and we've got a Bible verse over here that says the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear and that's from Psalm 27 verse 1 now our story today from the Bible is about a man called Solomon and Solomon was one of David's sons. Remember we learned about David over the past couple of weeks. So after David, um, after David had died, Solomon became king and um, Solomon, we were sort of chatting about it briefly last week about how God had a surprise for Solomon. So God is going to ask Solomon what he would like. God says to Solomon, ask me for anything and I will give it to you. And I wonder if we were asked that what we, would, we might ask for, what sort of things. If you could have anything you wanted, what would you ask for? And I wonder why you would ask for that thing. And um, it's a big, big question to think about. But Solomon had an answer that many of us might find unusual. And maybe we might not necessarily ask for that. So I've got a wee clip coming up now. I hope you enjoy watching it. Um, and it's about people trying to guess what Solomon might have asked for. So Solomon, um, 
was uh, told by God that he could ask for anything that he wanted and it would be granted to him. So what did he ask for? Have we watched it this clip? I hope you enjoy it. So what did he ask for? A submarine? No, he didn't ask for a submarine. I bet he asked to be rich or famous. That's what most kings want. Yes, that is what most kings want. But that isn't what Solomon asked for. No, Solomon asked for wisdom. Wisdom? What's that? Wisdom to be wise. The ability to make good decisions. What? How boring is that? He could have asked for a brontosaurus with headlights. When you're a king, making decisions is everything. Good decisions will help your people. Bad decisions will hurt them. Solomon didn't want to be a rich king or a famous king. He wanted to be a good king. I bet God liked that request. He sure did. God said, since you asked for wisdom, not only will I make you a wise king, I'll also make you a rich and famous king. So he got it all. Except the brontosaurus with headlights. I don't think he wanted one of those, Ian. Probably because he didn't know they exist. Let's just let that go now. All right. It'd just be fun, that's all. Okay, boys and girls, so out of all of the things that Solomon could have asked for, he asked for wisdom. And wisdom is um, knowing what the right thing to do is and trying very hard to do the right thing, both for yourself and for the people that you're leading and in line with what God would want you to do. That's what wisdom is. And so Solomon asked if he could be wise. And that was a very unselfish thing to ask for and a very humble thing to ask for because Solomon knew that he was going to be the king of all the people of Israel and he wanted to be a good king. He wanted to serve God and he wanted to serve his people. But he knew that maybe he wasn't that well equipped to do that at that point and so he asked God for help and he asked God for wisdom so that he could make good choices to help his people and to honour God. So I've got another wee clip coming up now that tells us a little bit more about the story of whenever God appears to Solomon in a dream and asks Solomon to ask for anything that he wanted and it would be granted to him. So enjoy this next wee clip that's coming up and then we'll chat some more about our story and from the I Am Storybook and about what it means when we say that the Lord is our light. David was old. He had been the king of Israel for many years and now his son Solomon was going to be king. God had promised David that Israel's king would always be someone from his family. Before David died, he gave Solomon some instructions. Be strong and brave, Solomon, David said. Obey God and you will be successful. God will keep his promise that every king of Israel will come from our family. When David died, Solomon became the king of Israel. One night, God appeared to Solomon in a dream. God said, Solomon, ask for anything you want, and I will give it to you. Anything? A king might have asked to live a long life or to have lots of riches. Solomon could have asked God to give him victory over all his enemies. But Solomon did not ask to be rich or to have a long life. Solomon wanted to be a good king. He asked for something even better. Solomon prayed, God, I am young, and I do not know very much about being a king. Please make me wise and obedient to you. Help me know the difference between right and wrong. Help me lead your people well. God was happy with Solomon's request. God said, I will give you wisdom. In fact, I will make you more wise and understanding than anyone who has ever lived. No one in the future will ever be as wise as Solomon. Then God said, Because you asked for wisdom, I will also give you what you did not ask for. Long life, riches, and honor. You will be greater than any other king during your lifetime. 
<gasps> Solomon woke up and realized God had spoken to him in a dream. Solomon praised God and offered sacrifices to worship him. Solomon was a wise king who wanted to do God's plan. God planned to give his people a greater and wiser king, his son, Jesus. Jesus completely trusted God with his life. Jesus surrendered his own life to die on the cross for our sin. Okay, boys and girls, hope you found that wee clip helpful in understanding a wee bit more about Solomon and the choice that he made to ask for wisdom when he could have asked for anything and it would have been given to him. Okay, so in our story, um, we're going to start off um, here chatting about how uh, King David was getting old and um, he was going to die and he um, wanted to choose Solomon to be the next king. King David had quite a few sons, but he had wanted Solomon to be the next king of Israel. So Solomon was anointed king of Israel. And um, Solomon went to a place called Gibeon. There's Jerusalem here. He went to a place called Gibeon to offer sacrifices to God. Um, and God was going to then ask Solomon a very important question. So we have in our storybook a very important question. <gasps> All the pages just flew out. Okay. So our story starts with this verse from Psalm 27, verse 1, that says, The Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear? Of course, the answer to that is no one, because if God is for us, he can be against us. So Solomon went to offer sacrifices to God. And um, people in the Old Testament, they did that in acknowledgement of how great God is. And as a way of worshipping God, they would sacrifice. That means they would give something to God um, to honour him and um, as a way of worshipping him. So Solomon made a great sacrifice to the Lord and then that night and um, the Lord appeared to him in a dream. So from the book of 1 Kings chapters 3 and 4, God chose David's son Solomon to be the next king. Solomon was a young man when he became king, just as his father David had been. One night after he had been worshipping the Lord, Solomon fell asleep and began to dream. God appeared to him in his dream. Ask me for whatever you want, God told Solomon, and I will give it to you. What should I ask for, Solomon wondered. Should I ask for a long life or to be rich or to be famous? But Solomon didn't ask God for any of those things. You were loving and kind to my father David, Solomon said, because he loved and followed you. And you gave him a son to be king after him, and I am that son. But I am young and new at this, so please give me wisdom. Give me understanding to know what is right and wrong, so that I can be a good king to your people. Solomon's request pleased God. I will give you wisdom, God said, and I will also give you what you have not asked for. I will give you riches and honour. And if you obey me all your days, I will give you a long life too. The dream ended and Solomon woke up. What an amazing dream. Solomon went to Jerusalem and worshipped God. And then he held a big feast for all his servants. God kept his promises to Solomon. He made Solomon rich and he made him the wisest man on earth. Solomon helped people to solve problems. He wrote thousands of songs and proverbs. He learned about God's creation, including the trees, the animals, the birds, the reptiles and the fish. Visitors from other lands traveled to Israel to honor King Solomon and to listen to him because he was so wise. Okay, boys and girls. So what does it mean when we say that the Lord is our light? Because that's the name we're thinking about today, the Lord, my light. Well, I have some lights with me here this morning. What's this? Yeah, I have my torch. It's quite a small torch, um, but it is pretty useful if there's a power cut. I can use my torch to help me see around. But the torch is only going to help me see a little bit 
of um, what is around me. It's not going to light up the whole room. It's only going to light up a little bit of what is around me. And look, actually it stopped working already. Um, oh, it's back on. The batteries in the torch will eventually run out and I'll need to get new batteries for it. And also, I'm holding the torch and I have to shine it around. The torch is not going to direct me. It might light up a little bit of what's around me, but I'm the one that has to move the torch. And um, so it's a wee bit useful, but it's not entirely useful. I'll set it back over here. Now, I've got something else over here. Oops. Health and safety procedures are being followed. Okay, what have I got here? Yeah, this is a candle. And a candle is also a type of light. And um, again, it's useful. It'll show me a little bit of what's around me if it's really dark, but it's not going to light up all of the darkness. And if it's really windy or um, stormy, or if, it, if someone walks past me and blows it out, like, the light's gone. Okay. So when we say the Lord, my light, what do we mean? Well, I have another verse from the Bible here that will help us. And um, it'll help us understand whenever Solomon asks for wisdom. This is another um, verse from the book of Psalms. It's Psalm 119, verse 105. And it says, Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. Isn't that amazing? So God's word is a lamp for our feet and a light on our path. God's word will direct us. God's word will show us the right way to go and the right things to do. And God's word will teach us about the promises of God and why we can trust him. So God's word is like a light showing us the way to go in the darkness. But what is the darkness? Well, you see, when the Bible talks about darkness, the Bible is talking about what we are like whenever we are still in our sin and we don't know God. Darkness is being in our sin without God to help us and show us the right way. So sin is darkness, but God's word is the lamp and the light that will show us the way to go and will guide us. When Solomon asked for wisdom, you can see there he's asking for wisdom. He was asking God to be his light, to guide him through the darkness. Do you know what, boys and girls? Solomon was thought to be the wisest man on earth, but that didn't save him. Solomon still made mistakes. Solomon was still sinful and Solomon, toward the end of his life, made really, really bad choices that didn't honour God. So even though he was super wise and even though that wisdom was a gift from God, Solomon still made mistakes. Solomon was still sinful. Solomon still needed a saviour. And that's why in this verse here we talk about the Lord being our light and our salvation because we need a saviour. All of us are sinful. The Bible says that, that we all do things that are wrong and things that don't honour God. And we need a saviour. We need someone to be the light in our darkness and to guide us and to show us the right way to go and, and to rescue us from our sins. And Jesus has done that. I've got another wee verse here. And we looked at this verse way back at Easter when we were thinking about the things that Jesus said about himself. In the book of John, chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So what Jesus is saying then is that he is our saviour. He is the one that will rescue us from our darkness. And remember, our darkness is the sin in our lives that separates us from God. But God has sent Jesus to be the light of the world. And whoever follows him will never walk in darkness because he has rescued us from our sin. Now, we do still do wrong things. We do still sin. But the punishment was taken by Jesus when he died on the cross. And that is why we can trust that the Lord is our light and our salvation. If we have put our trust in Jesus, taken the punishment for our sin, and if we have come to God and said sorry for that, and trusted that Jesus has been our saviour and will continue to be our saviour, of course. Okay, so where am I now? The, uh, God's word, if we want to know the right thing today, we look to the Bible and that's how God speaks to us. So his word is a lamp for our feet and a light on our path. And Jesus is 
the light of the world. There are lots of verses in the Bible that talk about darkness and that talk about light. But the Lord is our light and our salvation. And we have no one to fear and nothing to fear. Isn't that amazing? And his light will never, ever, ever, ever run out. And you know what, boys and girls? If we don't pay our electricity bill, the electricity company will stop us from having light in our house. They'll just turn off the electric. So we have to pay for electric to have light in our houses. Guess what? The gift of Jesus as the light of the world is completely free. Isn't that amazing? That is how gracious and loving and merciful our wonderful God is. So boys and girls, we really hope that you trust Jesus to be the light of the world and that you trust him to be your light and your salvation. Can we just pray together? Father God, we know that that our sin keeps us in darkness. And so we're just so thankful that you sent Jesus to be the light of the world. And that when we trust in him, and when our sins are forgiven, and when we choose to follow him, that we will never walk in darkness, but that he will be the light that leads us. And we thank you, Lord God, that your word is a light for us to follow, and that your word teaches us the right way to go, and that your word teaches us so much about you, and how amazing you are, and how we can trust all of your wonderful promises. And so we do just pray, Father, that you will bless our boys and girls with understanding of what we've been thinking about this morning. And we do thank you so much for them. And we do pray, Father, that we can meet together soon. And until then, we trust that you will keep us safe and that you will guide us. And we just thank you again for Jesus. And we pray these things in his precious name. Amen. Boys and girls, thank you for listening so well. And we're going to finish with a song that talks about how Jesus is the light of the world and he shines all over the earth. And we can trust him and he is the hope in the darkness. God bless you all and enjoy singing Light of the World and we will see you again, God willing, next Sunday morning. Bye. The world is searching for an answer